morning and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again to this beautiful devotion time. I, I know that a lot of things have been happening in your life and in my life and a lot of deaths throughout this week and the, the, the weeks that have gone before. A lot of deaths either in your family or in our families or in our friends or in the, the, the circle of colleagues or friends, friends or even in the mission worlds. I know this has really disturbed us a lot, both in the mind and spirit. But I just want you to take a small pause and listen to some five Bible characters that I've chosen from both the Old Testament and New Testament to give us some inspiration on how to deal with the, the situation, the prevailing situation of this pandemic. Uh, the, if you look at, you know, uh, these people that I will be introducing, people like Daniel, people like Habakkuk, people like Silas and Paul and, you know, Jonah. I think we will realize that in spite of all these problems, they were able to sing and praise God, both in their hearts and as well as outside. So these are the people who chose to live out of the box, to live an unscripted life. You know, life sometimes tells you to do this. Life makes us understand the way they feel. I mean, what the world thinks best for us, but... We have to live like these people, to live an unscripted life out of the box, you know, with the help of God. I believe uh, if you look at, um, you know, let me read through Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Here, Daniel and his friends were challenged to worship, the to bow down to the 90 feet tall uh, statue of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, we will not. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God we serve is able to save us from it and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. Verse 18 is important. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. I mean, this is a theological statement and it rings out so true with so true and so same with Habakkuk's prayer in chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, verse 18, yet I will still rejoice in God. I will be joyful in God my Savior. I think I just want to sing the song for all of you. And if you know, I mean, I, all of you know the song, please join with me as we sing this. I think they believe that because God lives in them, because they, they know that God is helping them to see the future. They can face tomorrows. They can face any situation. That's the song, you know, let's, let's all sing this song.
theological statement that, you know, Dan and people like Dan and Habakkuk, they says, God will help us. But even if he does not, if there's a purpose for us to die, so be it. That's a beautiful statement. And I want you to take, uh, I want to take you to another passage of the Bible and where Jonah, uh, you know, Jonah is in the, the belly of a fish and Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 and 10, let me tell you. He's singing in the well, in the, in the belly of the fish. He is singing a song. He says in chapter 2 and verse 9, But I with a song of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. Whatever I vowed, I will make good because salvation comes from God. I think if we meet such a situation, I don't know what you and I will be thinking. Let me take you to another passage in the Bible. You know, I'll not be reading it, but... The, it's very similar to what Jonah is doing. In the midst of all this trouble and darkness and death, he says, I will thank God and sing. Especially in verse, you know, in, in, uh, in uh, yeah, in John, sorry, in Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 and also in Acts chapter 16. If you read from 16 to 40, you will look at how Paul and Silas, they were in the jail, they were being beaten up, they were being publicly rebuked and, you know, flocked. And here at midnight, verse 25, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, he says, At midnight, they were praising and singing hymns to God. I don't know. I think this is what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say again, rejoice, no matter what. You may not be happy always. You may not be sad always. But rejoicing is a must. I think I'm going to close with this song. I think if you know the song, please. It's an old song. Are you tired of tracing a pretty rainbows? Are you tired of tracing? God, I think I want to leave you with, you know, I want to leave you with Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. It says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, with uh, nor demons, with the, nor neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God. I think this is an immense feeling of 
sharing oneness with God, the love of God has engulfed us. No matter what is happening outside, it doesn't matter. You are bound by the love of God and nothing can separate us. God bless all of you.